the stock market, a place where fortunes are made and often lost. Nowadays, it seems like the market is controlled by Reddit kids putting their life savings into a stock because a guy named Your Mom 71 told them to. But it wasn't always like this. So now we go way back in time to look at the beginnings of the stock market. Let's say that you are a glassblower in 1300s Venice and you want to start selling your goods, but you don't have any money to start a business. So what do you do? Go to a bank, of course. Oops. It looks like the bank sees you and realizes that you are broke, so they won't give you any money. What is one to do now? Well, don't fret, my friend. Just go to a money lender. His job is to give you money, wait till you start your business, and after a while, you slowly pay it back. It's a great deal. So now that money lender owns your debt, which, like I said before, means you pay back the money you owe to him. But sometimes money lenders would trade debts, kind of like how people trade stocks now. If he thinks that your business is too risky, he might trade your debt to another money lender who's looking for a high-risk interest loan to buy. And this was one of the first times people ever traded securities. In the 1500s, in Antwerp, Belgium, brokers and money lenders would meet to trade securities. Now, while this was closer to the modern stock market, there were still no stocks being traded. That said, people did trade debt issues, promissory notes, and bonds. In order to find the first actual stocks being traded, we have to go to the 1600s. At this time, countries were becoming quite rich from the New World. I mean, think about it. The Americas had gold, silver, lumber, potatoes, furs, sugar, tobacco, pretty much every valuable commodity you can imagine. And if you are a merchant, you definitely want to go to the New World and get as much of these goods as possible. But there's one problem. Going to the New World is really risky. I mean, your ship could sink. You could encounter pirates. A million things could happen. So these merchants would sell pieces of their company to investors in exchange for some money. And this was done so that if their trade mission failed, the money lost wouldn't only be theirs. Thus, the first stocks were created. At this time, there still wasn't a stock exchange. If you wanted to sell or buy a stock, you would have to track down a broker or wherever he may be. Now, while I would like to talk about the South Seas bubble, the tulip bubble, and the creation of the London Stock Exchange, those are all big events that deserve their own videos. So instead, let's talk about the beginning of the most prominent stock exchange, the NYSE. Contrary to what most people think, the New York Stock Exchange, or NYSE, was not the first stock exchange in America. The Philadelphia Stock Exchange was. But after it was started, the NYSE became the most notable American stock exchange pretty quickly. It was first created in May 1792, when 24 stockbrokers signed the Buttonwood Agreement in Wall Street, New York. They met under a Buttonwood tree, hence the name, and created a centralized exchange for American securities. For the next 200 years, it was pretty much the dominant stock exchange in the world. And while new stock exchanges have come to challenge that dominance, like the NASDAQ and Euronext, it seems like for now, the NYSE is all powerful. Thanks for watching. Please let me know if you would like to see more videos about the history of stocks, trade, or anything else financial. Also, please share this video with friends. With that said, make sure to have a great day.